the IMAX Battle at Monmouth Courthouse. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the gigantic box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back down to another Monster Hobbies What's in the Gigantic Mega Huge Box unboxing video as we look at the IMAX 609 American Revolution Battle at Monmouth Courthouse box set. You know what's really cool about this set? I have one for sale right here on my shelf and potentially on my website. You'd have to go down and check that out. www.monster-hobbies.ca Anyway, I have two of these because I wanted to build one back in the day. So we're going to take a look at the one that I kind of pseudo started and see what's in the box. The Battle of Monmouth Courthouse was the longest battle of the war, occurring on June 28, 1778. The Continentals, recently trained by Frederick von Steuben, showed the British they could win a pitched battle. Now let's take a look at the inside contents of this great big box. We start with this great picture here of the battle scene. And this is one of those box kits that has a lot of figures in it. As you can see here, it says the set includes American Militia, over 122 figures in various poses, two riders, two horses, one General Washington figure on horseback, one diorama base, and on the British side, it's got over 130 figures in various poses, four riders, and four horses. Now the box, as we turn it around, on the other side here, has all the paint callouts for the American side and the British side, and how to paint them all. And just a little bit of art, nothing quite special on the bottom. And now we're going to open up the lid and just see quickly what we have. Now keep in mind I did start this set a little bit. So I cut out all the American figures. They were on a parts tree, similar to the British ones here. They are the blue figures down here. So anyway, you get some parts trees of the British in red. Of course, a parts tree of the Americans in blue. And then there are a whole bunch of these brown part trees, which you really have to look at the figures and figure out which one belongs to which. I do believe these are the Americans here because they are duplicated in some of the blue guys. And over on this side are the British. But again, we will take a look at these in closer detail. And there is that diorama base. This is just a simple vacuum-formed sheet has a bit of a river or road running through the center of it and then of course some ground detail. Generally these I find these a little bit too small to put all the figures on so I don't really tend to use these. Now let's take a look at the figures individually in this box. We begin our examination with the American Army. The first figure we are going to look at is George Washington. This is a three-piece model which consists of a base, a horse, and George Washington himself. The pose is quite striking and fit for a general. The next figure represents two soldiers escorting a wounded comrade off the battlefield. This is a highly detailed piece that will be a challenge to paint, but will be rewarding in the end. Here is one of the drummers of the American Army. The drum is detailed nicely and looks correct. This is a soldier laying down a flag on the ground. These six soldiers are shooting their rifles from a kneeling position. They would work well situated behind cover, like a fence or a small wall. Six more soldiers are firing their rifles, but from the standing position. I painted the first soldier to show you how these figures look in uniform. A charge on the battlefield could be deadly on the rank and file formation. These six figures are on the move. These four men reload their muskets. From historical accounts, the pose is correct for this operation. Sometimes the only way to cross the battlefield was on your stomach. These four figures lead the way in the slow crawl. The best cover in many battlefields is to lay low and fire. These four figures look accurate. These two characters carry gunpowder kegs. The pose looks natural and you can tell by the way their knees are bent that the load is heavy. These commanders signal the charge 
or are giving the order to fire the muskets. It's just a matter of where you position them. These are the two horses for the American Army as mentioned on the box. They are part of the tan plastic pieces. The second drummer is represented by a boy. Two men are sitting on a log. The set includes several men who are prepared to fire. These militiamen are part of the Continental Army. Another set of heroes issuing orders. These men carry pistols and small packs on their belts. These two men are waving their hats in triumph. Two more militiamen, one tracking a trail and another firing his musket from a kneeling position. Now we look at the British Army. These two soldiers carry an ammunition box to the battlefield. The King's Royal Guardsmen marching into combat. They wear the traditional long coat of the British Army of this period. A British commander leads the charge. This is quite a dramatic pose and features a great sword and pistol. Here are two of the four horses included on the British side. The saddles are nicely detailed. These soldiers stand at attention awaiting orders. The one thing the Americans feared was a triangular blade bayonet attached to the long rifles. Here is a British drummer and a commander about to give orders. British soldiers about to thrust their bayonets into the enemy American soldiers. A British soldier bears the colors of the regiment. This figure has some great details. These are soldiers of the British Grenadier Regiment. Their hats are not the usual tri-peak hats worn by both sides, but are the taller fur style. Grenadier soldiers packing their rifles. The flag of the Grenadier Regiment. Here's the first shot of the tanned British soldier sprue. This man is aiming his rifle in a standing position. The same soldiers at attention molded in tan. You can see the detail better in this picture than in the red plastic. And that will conclude our look at the IMX Battle of Monmouth Courthouse American Revolution set. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that great unboxing where we got to look at IMEX's Battle of Monmouth Courthouse from the good old American Revolution, where George Washington got to go up that hill and defend it. And if you like this video and you like the models in this and you want one of your own, I got one right back here that I can ship out to you worldwide. Check out how to do that at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And while you're checking things out, don't forget to check out our Patreon account where you can help us out by joining up and checking all that out, getting monthly updates and new special videos. And that link that image will be up here. The link will be down in the description below. So you can click there and go there, which would be cool. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click that notification bell so that every time a new unboxing video comes out, you are the first one out of billions of people on planet Earth to know that I uploaded it. So until next time, happy model building.